Hello there, this is uh, Utkarsh Jain and we would be looking at the formulas of CFA level 2 quantitative methods. Now the the list of formulas, uh, so we would be looking at roughly 31 formulas uh, for the CFA level 2 quant and this is the broad list of those formulas. I have also tried to include some of the uh, theory parts or non-formula parts into uh, this list so that after the video session you would feel that you have a relatively stronger grip of the entire subject. So let us start. First uh, formula that we would look at is sample covariance. Now sample covariance formula we had also seen at CFA level 1. So the formula is summation of x minus x bar y minus y bar divided by since the formula is for sample the numerator is going to be or the denominator is going to be n minus 1. So fairly straightforward formula. Now on the exam it's very very unlikely that you would be required to calculate covariance but what is more important is how do you interpret. So now covariance does not have a positive or negative limit or boundaries. How do we interpret covariance? If covariance is positive we will say that relationship of the two data set which is x and y is positively related. If it is negative then they are negatively related. However, there are two major uh, issues with the covariance as a number. Number one, if you see a covariance of 60 and other covariance of 90, you cannot say that covariance of 90 shows a stronger relationship than covariance of 60. And the intuition behind this is that covariance is affected by absolute values of x and y. So larger the value of x and y, automatically covariance number would be larger. Okay, so number one, that larger value of covariance does not indicate stronger relationship. The second difficulty with the covariance is that generally the unit of covariance is percentage square. So if you're dealing with percentage data, the unit would be percentage square, which is meaningless. And therefore, the usage of covariance is limited. Okay, so what use will we have a covariance? One small trick that you might want to remember for the exam that if the covariance is positive, then correlation would be positive. And if correlation is positive, then automatically the slope is going to be positive. Okay, so positive covariance would result in result to positive correlation and positive correlation would result into positive slope. Moving forward, next formula is sample correlation coefficient. Now the formula for sample correlation coefficient is covariance between x and y divided by sample standard deviation of x multiplied by sample standard deviation of y. So now we saw in the previous slide that covariance will have a percentage unit as a square standard deviation will have percentage, standard deviation will have percentage and therefore generally co correlation will not have any unit per se. How, how do we interpret correlation? Correlation is bounded by minus 1 and plus 1. One would be a perfect positive linear relationship, minus 1 would be perfect negative linear relationship, 0 means no linear relationship. One benefit of using correlation is if you see correlation of 0.7 and if you see correlation of 0.8, you can always say that correlation of 0.8 shows stronger linear relationship as against correlation of 0.7. So moving forward, t-test for correlation coefficient. So to perform the t-test for correlation coefficient, you need to remember the formula for test statistic. And the formula is R into N minus 2 divided by 1 minus R square. And of course, the degrees of freedom here are going to be N minus 2. Okay, so please remember this for your examination. This is a testable concept. The test statistic for the T test of correlation coefficient is R into N minus 2 divided by 1 minus R square. Moving further. slope coefficient or beta so b1 or beta is equal to covariance between x and y divided by the variance of x so covariance 
of x and y divided by variance of x with an assumption that x is the x-axis variable which is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. So we also know that covariance is actually equal to correlation between x and y into standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y divided by standard deviation of x into standard deviation of x which is the variance of x and we can have a new formula which is correlation between x and y multiplied with standard deviation of y divided by standard deviation of x moving on to the next formula intercept term so this is strictly not a formula but more of an interpretation so if you have a simple regression like this then we would say that this particular point here is the intercept of the regression which means when the value of x is 0 this would be the value of y now what is the standard equation for a simple regression we would say y is equal to a plus bx plus an error term and we generally assume that the error term is 0 so we can avoid writing this so y is equal to a plus bx right so we can simply manipulate this formula a little bit and we can say intercept would be equal to what is the predicted value minus b into the x which is the independent variable moving further type 1 error and type 2 error so how do you think of this so let us say this is uh, okay let me select eclipse okay so we have two nulls here okay this let's call the first one as type 1 error let's call the first one as oh, I've used the wrong colors let me do it again okay so now let's call the first one as a good null okay. and the second one as a bad null okay i'm using loose language so that you remember this now type 1 error is the probability that you would reject a good null okay so probability of rejecting a null that should not have been rejected is the type 1 error and type 2 error is the probability that you will fail to reject fail to reject a null which was incorrect okay so please uh, remember this for your examinations type 1 error is the probability of rejecting a good null and type 2 error is the probability of failing to reject a incorrect null next concept power of test so 1 minus probability of type 2 error 1 minus probability of type 2 error is called as power of test in the same fashion 1 minus probability of type 1 error would be called as the confidence level and what we have also learnt at level 1 is that if you try to reduce the probability of type 1 error then the probability of type 2 error will increase okay so they are decrease in probability of type 1 error will come at the cost of increase in probability of type 2 error the only way in which you can reduce both the errors simultaneously is by increasing your sample size which is n so then what is power of test power of test is 1 minus the probability of type 2 error significance level significance level is the probability of type 1 error so they are same concept significance level is same as the probability of type 1 error and therefore we can say 1 minus probability of type 1 error which was equal to confidence level so 1 minus significance level is also equal to confidence level because probability of type 1 error and significance level is the same concept p-value so how do you think of this so let us say this is uh, okay so this is uh, 
this is some person P how does it look like a person okay so this is a person P and what we would think is how, how we would think of this is so one sentence that you can remember just a small memory trick is that P does not does not like P does not like tall people okay so P does not like tall people and all he wants to make new friends and all these friends have one single name which is significance level okay just a very stupid memory trick but generally works so let us say the height of P is 5% and the rule is that if his friend which is a significance level turns out to be more than 5% then P is not going to like it so if the significance level is same as 5% or 6% or 7% or 8% the rule of thumb that P does not like tall people and therefore we would say reject whereas it, if the significance level is 1%, 2%, 3%, 4% then he does not mind being friends with uh, people who are not tall or not taller than him and therefore here the solution would be fail to reject okay so how would you interpret p value p value is the smallest level of significance at which null can be rejected but how do we apply this in practice if p value is given as 5% then you can reject the null as long as significance level is 5 6 7 8 9 same or more than that but if p value is 5% and significance level is less than that then the solution is going to be fail to reject So confidence interval for slope coefficient. So confidence interval for slope coefficient would be what is the current value given for B1 plus minus critical value. These critical values we would get from the T table into the standard error. Okay, so straightforward, similar to many confidence level or interval formulas we saw at level one. B1, which is a slope coefficient, plus and minus critical values into the standard error. Then coefficient t test that means performing hypothesis testing for the slope coefficient which is b1 so how would you calculate that you would say sample statistic and what is sample statistic the value of b1 that you have calculated minus hypothesized value sample statistic minus hypothesized value that means whether you want to compare b1 with 0 what is your hypothesis do you feel that b1 would be 2 or 3 or 4 so minus hypothesized value divided by the standard error okay so again similar to the type of formulas that we saw at cf level 1 for testing mean sample statistic in this case which is coefficient minus hypothesized value divided by standard error predicted value of dependent variable so if you've been given an equation like this which is let us say y is equal to b0 plus b1 x plus an error term so this is a simple linear regression and if you've been given values for b0 b1 and x so for example intercept term is given as 3 slope is given to us so intercept is given to us as 3 slope is 2 and the x value is given to us let us say as 7 right now the expected value of error term is always assumed to be 0 so what equation do we have here we have 3 plus 2 into 7 which is going to be 14 and straightforward we'll have a predicted value of 17 and in the same fashion you can always solve for the multiple regression predicted values then confidence interval for predicted value again straightforward so we will say predicted value plus minus critical value critical values would be derived from the table multiplied with the standard error okay so on the exam generally you would not be expected or you would not be assumed to solve for the standard errors because mo in most of the cases the standard errors are calculated by statistical softwares so you can look at more of interpretation based questions on CFA level 2 examinations 
so the remaining part of the videos uh, remaining part of the formulas we will see in the next part of uh, this video series this was utkarsh thank you very much